Hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. So I just thought I'd show you a cordage bed that I make using Prusik loops. I've got a hank of a 100 foot 3 8 inch cordage I'm going to strap up between these two trees. They're about as wide as a human being and they're about uh, 15 feet apart or so. So let me just cut scenes and we'll show you the different stages as we go. Okay, so what I've done now is I've done a lashing between the two trees where there's cordage that runs down both sides. Uh, I did two layers. I don't think it was necessary, but I just had the cordage to do it. So as you can see, it just kind of runs the length between the two and then pops out the other side and runs back. That gives me my kind of bed frame, if you will, that I'll end up doing the lashing against. These trees, like I say, they're about 15 foot apart and about maybe two and a half foot wide. So. So what I have here is um, fisherman's knots that I use to tie loops to just make loops and rope. I've got a whole set of them. There's uh, about 16 I'll use in this project. They'll all be strapped to the ridge line and where I just set them up as kind of a classic Prusik knot and I'll have them in one foot spacings along the distance of the line and on the other side as well. So here you can see I've got four already set onto the line. These loops are fairly rapid to put on. You just set them on the line, kind of wrap them around once, wrap them around twice, and then feed the line through. And that one's set on. Now I'll do eight or nine of them on each side of the, the line. You'll see why in a minute. So I just want to show you kind of an example of this knot. Uh, so I take the where I've done the fisherman's knot and tied it off, if you will, and I set that on one side. And then I take this loop and wrap it around the outsides. And then I wrap it around the outside again, making sure your lines stay to the outside. Then I take that knot and just feed it through. Just kind of make sure your cordage didn't get set on itself. And then when you do that, it allows you to now have a secured loop. I say done in a Prusik knot style. There's lots of YouTube tutorials on the Prusik knot, but and this allows it where I can have tension being applied to one side or the other, but this loop itself isn't going to slip down the line. So by doing that on both sides, it allows me to have tie points that I can set the bedding across these lines. So as you can see now, I have eight Prusiks hooked up onto the line. And their space, like I say, about nine or nine to nine inches to a foot or so, give or take. I mean, it's kind of, you can slide them back and forth to adjust. The critical point was from the first one to the one that sits down on the end, it's about seven foot because I want to have ample length for, I'm six foot tall, so I want to have ample length for the bed so I can easily have it kind of head to toe for me to sit on these things. So now I'll do the other side and then I'll cut back. So as you can see now, I've got Prusik set on both lines running from the trees to the trees and I've got them opposite each other, if you will, as I step down. And this will give me a place to kind of weave the main bedding to each other as I go. So I've got the eight on the one side and the eight on the other. To put these Prusik knots on the line, Took, takes about two or three minutes and if it was on a single line potentially you could just leave them on the line permanently if you wanted to. I'm just doing this, uh, I'm using this kind of bright orange colored paracord to really contrast against the rope and that way you guys can see clearly exactly how this structure kind of goes together. So now the thinking is really I've just made a loop in the rope and did a lark's head hitch onto the Prusik. And now I've got this kind of line of paracord. I'll just get to the end of it. And all I really want to do is start feeding the line like a zigzag stitch, if you will. 
touch the ground. I want to start feeding the line through. And it'll connect in as such. Do the same every second one now. And I'm just going to feed that line through. I don't know if you're catching this on the camera very well, but I'll do that every second one. I'll see if I can adjust the camera and set it on a better line. And you guys can see it as I kind of set it across. So like I say, I'm just carrying on every second loop I'm going to be hooking into with uh, where the prosthetics are. So I've got one free. Grab the end of my line here. I want to hook that through this prosthetic. Feed it through. I'm going to go into the second one down. Feed that through. You can see it's starting to form a zigzag stitch, if you will. Feed it through the second one, skipping every second one. apply a bit of tension on it. You want it to kind of have a little firmness to it, if you will. Now I'll go through the last prusik on this end. My line might be a little shallow for this example, but I just want to go across into this prusik now. And now I'm going to zigzag back through all the way back down so that we have kind of a cross zigzag that sits across these. So this does take a few minutes to set up. Uh, realistically, if you're in a rush, you can have this up and running in about 10-15 minutes. But it does, uh, if you don't have a bedding and you're in a wet environment, then obviously there's tree availability. Uh, it does give you the ability to get up off the ground, which in some situations is critical. Um, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, there's always wet conditions, if you will, almost all year long. You'll find that there's consistent wet conditions on the ground. Even if it hasn't rained for a couple of weeks, the moisture is just in the land. That's never seems to really leave. So if you're not using things like cots and those types of things which get you elevated and off the ground, potentially uh, this would be an option. Or if you're in swampy environments where you know moisture is going to be a problem, this type of uh, setup would be an ideal one for you. So I tried to use a slightly different colored orange to show you kind of how this all comes together. but. So, generally speaking, if I ended up having a longer line, my line's getting a little bit on the shallow side here, and I'll have to adjust the tension so it's kind of evenly spread across these, but uh, what I would end up doing then is, say, try to go through the prosix where I'm going, I'll just do a couple of them, if the line permits I'll go further, but I want to go through the prosix after I've done the zigzags straight across to give additional support. Really you're just trying to weave as much as you possibly can into this structure <coughs> to make it that you have as much support as possible. I'll just tie it off at this point in time to give, you know, gives a kind of quick example. But as you can see, the zigzag foundation kind of sits across now. So I'll just lay on the bed and you can see. So now 
I'm successfully off the ground. You know, I've got a good, what, uh, six inches, maybe a foot clearance, and uh, it's fairly comfortable. If you want to increase the comfort of this, you could put down like a ground mat on top of this, or potentially you could just do more of the Prusik loops as you went. Uh, instead of making it, you know, nine inch spacings, uh, you could have 24 Prusik A and do, you know, 12 on each side and uh, shorten up the distance between them to ensure that you had uh, enough support. But uh, as, you, uh, as I say though, this right now already feels fairly comfortable. I could easily uh, have a, a backpack or a sleeping bag and just, you know, or a, a, a quilt or a sleeping bag and, and easily could fall asleep in this kind of situation. It is quite comfortable. It's almost like laying on a hammock. So this really was just for kind of demonstration purposes. I wanted to kind of show you the idea of what you do here. Uh, like I say, it's uh, if all you've got is rope and you're in really wet conditions, this is kind of the place to get up and get off the ground. So I'll do a little bit of a close-up so you can see. Once I zigzagged and hit the end, I just went across and then zigzagged through. It allowed to have kind of a, uh, a netting, a webbing. At the end, it's, it looks a little sloppy down at this end, but all I did really was just lash it so that it had a place to brace onto. But uh, realistically, like I say, if you wanted more support, these are adjustable. So you could potentially have them where they were only a couple inches apart from each other if you wanted to take the time. But this, like I say, was more of an example than anything. I tried to use different colored ropes and that so you could clearly see what was going on, but I know the two oranges are very similar in color but uh, easily able to hold a couple hundred pounds uh, no problem I, I'm, I'm 220 pounds and as you saw it held me without any issue uh, when it comes to the paracord itself it's got a, I believe 550 for the the, the braking strength uh, you know that type of thing so uh, amply strong enough to be able to hold uh, this 3 8 inch cordage that I'm using I believe is 1800 pound strength I mean this is overkill for the amount of uh, strength that is uh, is needed um, but yeah it gives you an example of the bed so I'll just kind of do a closing shot of me laying in the bed I'll set up the tripod at a distance so you can get a better angle of how low or off the ground I am. It's easy enough to adjust though when it came to when it comes to if I wanted to uh, um, raise or lower the bed you can just adjust if this isn't on too taunt you can just adjust how it's wrapped around the tree so you could raise or lower your head or feet and that kind of thing. As always I set up a kind of little classic tripod to help with the camera work but uh, yeah let me just kind of cut to a different scene where you can see me laying on the bed itself and uh, I'll wrap it up there. As you can see, it forms almost like a hammock. Very comfortable. This is definitely ultra light. It's really for situations where something's gone awry and you need to get up off the ground. As you can see, I've got good clearance. Just by adjusting how high up on the trees you are, you can adjust the clearance of things. But uh, easy to whip together. I like say probably 10-15 minutes to actually put this together. It always takes a little longer when you're doing the camera work, but when you're out in the field and you want to hustle, you can have this together in five or ten minutes if you really put your mind to it. It's not a complex build or anything, it's just um, primarily understanding uh, uh, how to make the fisherman's knots and how to do the prusik loops and then just having enough of them where you can start to assemble things like this. Uh, these can be quite handy, uh, not just for setting up as a bed to sleep on, but uh, any type of uh, bushcraft furniture or that type of thing. Easily comfortable enough to sit on and have it as a you know, kind of bench to relax on. Obviously I'd have to adjust the distancings of these prusik loops and, uh, and uh, make the, the ties a little tighter so that things are far more firm. But as it goes for a bed, as you can see, I'm fully off the ground, no problem. Uh, the, the only real restriction on these things is really the width of the trees. Uh, you always want to get trees that are amply wider than your shoulders would be because they will contract a bit on the sides when you apply the pressure of the, the ropes being tied. So uh, just finding trees that are big enough. Um, in some areas the trees are small so potentially you'd have to adjust and go around two trees that were close to each other potentially on both ends or you know improv things it's the nature of bushcraft but like I say uh, ultra comfortable it really uh, 
can be used for a lot of different purposes for sure. Um, oh, I broke myself a bit, but uh, one of the so one of the other things you can easily do with this kind of setup, given that you're already in between two trees, is throw up your ridge line. Your ridge line can easily sit over top of this. One of the things you can do is, instead of having your tarp when it's tied down kind of in the back as a lean-to, you actually swing it under and tie it onto one of these ridge lines so it swings in underneath you. Then what that'll allow is uh, um, to kind of create a little trapped air space underneath your body where if, if the tarp literally goes underneath you know, and then comes out over and up above and then off of the ridge line kind of coming off. It allows you to create a kind of a little cocoon, if you will, that you can use to kind of stay out of the elements. If you're, uh, you know, gonna set up a tarp, which normally people do anyways. But uh, ideal setups for using with the tarp is a ridge line, you know, centered right over top of the bedding. You can't ask for better. If I did uh, a little bit of a better job and made these far more tight and firm when it came to the knot, you easily use it as a chair, you know, uh, camp furniture, if you will, to get up off the ground. Uh, you could easily turn around and put uh, flat surfaces on this, create table environments, that type of thing. Uh, this uh, this basic construct has many, many purposes. So, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Uh, it's, uh, if you like the videos that you're seeing, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff that goes on with standard YouTube whatevers. So, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep making content of this. Hopefully I'll do a, a kind of better version of this. I'm just running out of sunlight. We're getting in the later part of the day here. And uh, I was a little late getting out to begin with. So I just wanted to kind of show this because I thought it would be interesting for people that are kind of bushcrafty people and into those types of things of here's a little side project you could do with a bit of your cordage. So this was the basic supplies used. This was a 3 8 inch anchor rope that was, uh, I believe it's about 100 foot long if I remember correctly. I think this is the 100 foot one. And then I had these loops, like you say, just simple fisherman's knots tied into them. I used uh, 16 of these, so eight on each side. I had nine, but I ended up having to use one for the tripod to help with the uh, video recording. And then this was about a 30 foot hanker rope. So I know it is a, a cordage intensive, but the actual tear, dime, tear down time I was between these two trees to tear that whole structure down and have it back into this uh, little pile, if you will, uh, only took me about uh, two and a half, three minutes. Very, very quick. The prosthetics just pop off. You know, this uh, line just comes back out of the zigzags really rapidly. But uh, like I say, I would have done nine on each side, but I always set up these wooden tripods to help lift up my camera so I can get it kind of more eye level views. Then I tend to always do quick lashing of the tripod with a loop.